Welcome back, everyone. We have Marcus with us, uh, President 10 CSA from Code. Uh, Marcus, how are you doing? Doing well. Doing well. How about yourself? We are doing great. And where are you currently, actually? Uh, it's actually kind of a funny story. I'm coming to you from Austria. I'm actually uh, on vacation right now, so I'm in the Austrian wine country. Wow, uh, that sounds great. Like normally in the US, so it's a little bit of a different setup. Okay, great. So you're going to talk to uh, talk about uh, visual recognition using uh, Azure Cognitive Services. That is, is that correct. That's vision. Yep. Awesome, awesome. So I leave you to the presentation. You can uh, continue. You can start. Good luck and cheers. Well, hello everyone. Very excited to be here. Bumming that I didn't get to go to Mauritius in, in person. Would have been a little bit of an island to island visit as I'm uh, normally from Hawaii. Uh, but of course, that's not uh, working out this year. But uh, at least we get to do this virtually. And that's pretty exciting as well. So uh, excited to be here. And we got a lot of cool stuff to talk about here today. So let's dive right in. I already got introduced. So uh, I'll just skip over this session here. A um, little bit about my company, just so you know what our background is. Uh, I own a company called EPS, which is probably better known as Code or Code Consulting. We do things like Code Magazine, so a lot of people know us for that. Uh, we do a lot of training, we work a lot with customers. So what I'm doing here today is I'm going to share my experiences that we have both in terms of being a consulting and custom software company, uh, but also because we do a lot of presentations, we do a lot of writing, we have a lot of authors, we get a lot of feedback from readers. And so I just want to share with you uh, a lot of the things that we learn from all those different venues that kind of come to a crossroads in, uh, in our company. Uh, also, I want to point out, uh, I'm mainly a software developer. That's how I spend 90% of my time, even though I own these companies and and I'm involved in running them. I'm also a Microsoft Regional Director, and I want to make sure everybody understands what that means. Uh, Microsoft Regional Director is somebody who has a formal relationship with Microsoft, which means I'm privy to a lot of inside information. I, I'm, I have the ability to take feedback back to Microsoft. I work with a lot of product teams, but, and this is very important, I am not, uh, I repeat, I'm not working for Microsoft. I don't get paid by them. Uh, so I can say and do whatever I want, and I usually do. And so I'm just going to show you how I see some of this technology uh, from an outsider's point of view, just happens to have insider knowledge. Uh, so there's going to be no marketing or anything like that. We're going to see a bunch of code and, and stuff like that. Also, one quick other thing uh, I already mentioned, we are the publisher of Code Magazine. And uh, therefore, as the owner, I get to give away free subscriptions. So I put up a little link here for you. Uh, if you go to a website slash subscribe slash VDC 2020, you can sign up for a completely free digital magazine subscription, no strings attached. So just a little giveaway. I'll put that slide up again at the end. Um, but easy to remember, just add slash VDC 2020 at the regular subscription URL. Anyway, we got a ton of stuff to talk about, so uh, let's dive right in. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is computer vision. Now, we're going to talk about computer vision specifically with Microsoft Azure and some of the services that are available there. But a lot of this stuff is also applicable uh, to other providers of computer vision services. So we're going to talk about what are the scenarios where you can use computer vision. I'm going to talk about how you use the standard services that are available and you're going to spend time talking about taking that a step further and doing custom things with computer vision. So this is all about letting the computer see and making sense of it. And, uh, and a lot of people say, oh, well, that's, you know, for people in TV or, or who knows what and not for me as a business application developer. But nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, Computer vision is something that almost any application can benefit from today when you really think about it. And I find it harder at this point to actually find scenarios where you couldn't use AI and computer vision. So that's kind of the approach with which we're going to uh, approach this particular session here. 
And, uh, and with that, uh, let's dive into the overview. So what is computer vision? Uh, it's a little bit difficult to define what that even is because it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. It's a very large field, encompasses many different technologies. But at the bottom line, we always come back to the same theme. It's about letting software make sense of what's visually available in an image or in a video. Now we're going to mainly focus on images here today because I just don't have time to go through all the permutations of this, but a lot of the stuff that you see here today applies just as much for videos. All of this falls under the area of cognitive services, especially in the Microsoft world. You, you'll hear this term a lot. Uh, you'll hear people refer to it as AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning. It's really pattern recognition, right? It's finding patterns in, in this case, visual information, but it's, you know, cognitive services is a much bigger field and whether information is visible or not, maybe it's perhaps not that important, but in our session here today, we're going to focus on the visible visual stuff. So pattern recognition fundamentally is what we're talking about, but of course it sounds much sexier to say artificial intelligence or machine learning or, or cognitive services are one of those terms. Now, we already talked about that a little bit. Um, again, I can really, I, I have a hard time thinking of scenarios that cannot benefit from computer vision. And I'll show you some very specific examples. Now, in my world, I build mostly business applications. And in business applications, we do all kinds of stuff with, with computer vision. Uh, I'll show you an example of where we built a very conventional a product database for a customer where we help the customer create a, a higher quality version of their product database is simply by adding uh, product search based on, on visual recognition. You can do things like quality control. Uh, we have customers that do manufacturing and as they manufacture things, we have we use computer vision to verify that the thing that got built got built properly or more correctly uh, more specifically assembled properly that's actually a relatively tricky task it's relatively easy to recognize something in an image it's much more difficult to recognize that it's faulty but uh, we're doing that as well we're doing things like facial recognition i'll show you some specifics around that facial recognition is one of those things that for a lot of people is a very hot topic uh, and it seems to be like the last greatest, newest thing that, that kind of looms in the distance and, and is a little scary perhaps. Uh, the reality is facial recognition is a solved problem, has been solved for several years uh, now. So for people in computer vision, this is not the hot new thing, uh, but it's very interesting what you can do with that. I mean, I have a friend who's building a product that helps find criminals and terrorists in large crowds, for instance, or, or that recognizes that somebody in that crowd has a gun and who is that person and so on. So we have that sort of stuff. We're also talking about little things like website beautification. How do I make my website more beautiful, especially with dynamic data? Uh, I can use image recognition to do things on the fly and we'll, we'll take a look at that as well. Okay. So again, it becomes harder to think of scenarios where you wouldn't want computer vision in there in some way. Okay, so how can you do computer vision? You're not going to do this from scratch. You're going to use some existing service because this is some pretty sophisticated AI or pattern recognition. Uh, you'd really have to know a lot about neural nets and all kinds of other things related to that field. You probably don't want to do any of that. Uh, and then you'd need very large scale infrastructure. So instead what we do is we use existing services that make it easy for us to use existing image recognition or customize it. And that service is available for Microsoft, IBM, of course, Amazon, Alibaba, if you're more in the Asian markets. Uh, so there's lots of, lots of providers out there that do this. In this session, we'll focus on Microsoft's custom vision services that are part of Azure Cognitive Services. Uh, but be aware that many of the things I'm telling you here today are going to be available in similar form with pros and cons and some are better in one area than the others. But in similar forms, uh, they are available on many different cloud offerings. Okay. Now, when we talk about image recognition, there's really two different levels at which we can talk about image recognition. 
There's what I call standard computer vision, which is a version where you have existing services that are trained to do and recognize certain things. And you can just use them and it's super simple and it just works out of the box. And if one of those fits your needs, then that is definitely a very, very good way to go because you don't have to worry about any of the underpinnings. Now, as we'll see in the later parts and the more interesting parts of this session, uh, it gets more interesting when we talk about customizing the recognition systems. But for now, we'll start with the standard computer vision setups and we'll see what's available in the Microsoft world. And the first thing that everybody runs into is the standard Microsoft computer vision. If you just Google Microsoft computer vision, you get to that URL that's at the bottom of the screen here. And that allows you to start playing with the service. It allows you to start signing up with it. And then you can use it from your software. So I'm gonna show you a bunch of samples here to start out that are just, you can play with their interface. But then the next step is to actually go and integrate that into your own software and call it from your own applications, whether that is a mobile app, whether that's a web app, whether that's a Windows app. Uh, could even be an app that's built into an IoT device, like a camera. And that's actually a very, very common way to go. But for now, we can just use uh, the, the test bench that Microsoft provides us and play around with that. Now, what this is going to do for us, it's going to recognize a lot of standard things. And it's gonna be fairly accurate at that, but of course, if you're building something very specific, as we'll see later, uh, if the more specific I can get, the more accurate the recognition will be. Uh, for instance, uh, the image that we're seeing on the screen here, where a guy is skateboarding, I would expect a standard computer vision system to recognize that there's a man and that there's a skateboard. But if I wanted a database of skateboards and I wanted to recognize different skateboards from different manufacturers, I could probably do better by, rec by, by training my own recognizer and training it only with skateboards and then letting it do that. Uh, and we could even mix and match things. So we could say, oh, here is an image and there's a man in it and that man is on a skateboard. And then we know where the skateboard is, as we'll see in a moment. And then I could do secondary recognition on just that area and say, hey, what skateboard is that? Okay, so we could mix and match things. But that's the basic setup here. And let's just go ahead and let's dive right into it. Let's actually go uh, into this Microsoft Computer Vision uh, web page. And like I said, you can just Google Microsoft Computer Vision. Get to here is the one that I already have up on my screen there. So that's, that's how easy it is to get to it. Or of course, you can use the link in my uh, slide deck. So what we can do in here is we can create an account and we can start this for free or we can scroll down a little bit. And right here within this page is a little test bench application that allows us to play around with some images and then see what's gonna happen. So here is that guy on a skateboard and I can click on that. And as I click on this, what the system does behind the scenes is it actually recognizes this image and, and it's gonna tell us over here a lot of things about what it thinks is in that image. Now you're gonna say, oh, well, that's rigged. There's only six images there. And, and of course, they know what's in those. Well, I'll show you in a moment that that's not true. In fact, what's happening here is Microsoft is in fact analyzing this here, that we have a rectangle with certain coordinates that got recognized. And the system said, hey, there's an object in here. And this object is probably a skateboard with a 90% uh, confidence rating. It's pretty sure that this is a skateboard and that's this guy down here. And we can mouse over it and it puts up a, a little tooltip that says skateboard. And then it recognized the second object in this image, again, with certain coordinates. And it says, this is a person and it has a 95% confidence that this is a person. So now with this information, which we just see here in this little test bench application, but we could make a call into this system, just a REST-based service call from any language, and we'd get back the same information, or we could upload this image and we'd get back this information. Now it gets even a little more interesting here. We see other interesting things like uh, different tags that are associated with this. Like we've already discovered that skating 
or skateboarding is one of the things that's happening here. And it has a very, very high confidence level that this is what it might be. Now, it also thinks, well, oh, this is kind of similar to snowboarding. So that's not correct here. It's not always going to be completely correct, just like a person looking at an image wouldn't always be correct. But the um, thing that it thinks it might be, then we know uh, that this is sporting equipment. Uh, and so on and so on. So there's different things that we see in here that the system tells us that this might also be. And those that type of information can be very, very interesting. Now we can also go a little further down. Another interesting thing that's coming along here is a description of the image. And this is where, to me, things get really exciting. It says here, you know, the skating is involved. There's a person in there, a man. He's probably outdoors in front of a brick wall somewhere and so on, right? It's a young man and he's in the air and it's like, wow, that's pretty cool, right? The fact that it, it recognizes that this guy is jumping or performing a trick. And it all comes down to this final description here where it all adds it up and it says, this is a young man riding a skateboard. Now that is pretty amazing when you ask me. And you probably say, well, this, this is canned images. The system just knows these images and, and therefore came up with this and this is all fake, but it's not. I'll show you in a moment that it can do that with pretty much any image. Uh, what else do we have in here? A few things about, about the image, you know, is it, what format is it? Is it a clip art or a line drawing? That's kind of interesting uh, content. That's something that we use a lot uh, when we have say product databases and people attach images for products. Uh, if you want to make sure that nobody maliciously uploads something that would be rated for adults uh, or maybe have sexual content or something like that, uh, you get this flag back that tells you whether there's something in there that you probably uh, should eliminate. And then there's a specific score for that. So things like that, right? race-based things. Um, also, what I find very interesting is it gives us things color and, and foreground color. And then this last thing here is particularly interesting. It says, what would be a nice accent color that would go nice with this particular image? Uh, so in other words, if you put that image on a website, what would be a nice background for this image to be on? And, and we can play around with that. We can grab that and see if that would actually look good. Let's just bring up the dev tools here for a moment and we'll just grab this guy here and inspect it and we're just going to add a background color and paste that in and there it is. And now we see that, yeah, you know, that image looks pretty good on that kind of a background color. Uh, so that's what this also gives you. And we could do this with any image and, and it often does very well. It essentially tells us there's an AI that's running there that says, hey, this is an image color, background color that would go well with this image. And we use that and I'll show some examples of that later where we dynamically adjust the color to show something that looks pretty good. Okay, go ahead and we can go to different images here. Like uh, take a look at this image. This is pretty wild. Uh, and, and as humans, you can see that there's probably a train and two blurry people. And sure enough, uh, when we go into this and we look at uh, the information that it gives us, it says people waiting at a train station. And it gives us in these art as two people and there's a subway train. So pretty darn good what it recognizes there. And so we can play around with this. Here's more stuff in, a, in, a, in an image that has seated people, uh, things like uh, chairs and desks and computers and we could find all that. You see how many objects it recognizes in here. Another thing that this can do out of the box is it can actually recognize uh, written text and it can recognize forms. Now there is a further service that can be used to then actually recognize the different fields in here and automatically fill those in and get back the chase and with the field values. So in this case where we see um, we have some handwriting here and then we could actually invoke that particular service. It goes a little beyond my session here today, but just so you're aware, you can do that as well. And if you want more info on that, feel free to contact me. 
And then a final example of the, the default ones that I want to show, recognizer. This standard recognizer is also made to recognize celebrities. So people that are in the public eye, that are known to the public, uh, would be recognized. And in this case here, it's such an Adela, the Microsoft CEO, and he is in this database. This is trained for him. And when we look at what the system recognizes, it says, hey, this is such an Adela wearing a suit and a tie. Okay, it doesn't wear a tie, pretty close, uh, but it certainly recognized Sacha. And this works with, I don't know how many celebrities that the system is pre-trained for. So if you are, uh, if you have an image, a photo that you took of Sacha yourself, you could upload this and it would certainly recognize it. So anyway, so far I've just shown you um, a bunch of images that Microsoft provides for us. But again, you're probably going to say, well, this is all fake. Uh, we should really have this. Uh, with my own images, and this certainly works. So you can come here, uh, you can either put in a URL or you can hit the browse button. And let's just go ahead, let's go into my pictures here. I'm just gonna grab uh, one of my pictures I took. Uh, and there is our doggy on a beach in Hawaii. And we're gonna upload that. It's gonna appear here in a moment and the system is gonna analyze it and so it recognized that there's a dog in this picture right so that's just a photo that i took so there's a dog in this picture here but you can see it recognized quite a lot of things it recognized that this is on a beach it recognized it's a carnivore which is certainly true a mammal uh the sand and so on right so if we look at the description there's things like outdoor dog beach water and so on, ocean waves is in there somewhere. Here it is. And it fundamentally comes up with this description, a dog lying on a sandy beach. Now, how amazing is that, right? This, this vision system that's available to you out of the box, you can just make a rest call into this system. Uh, we're just using the test bench here. We can make a rest call into the system, upload the bytes of this, and it will give you back this type of information. So pretty darn amazing. And you can do this with lots and lots of different things and, and you'll be blown away as to what computers can recognize at this point. And that's always one of the things uh, that when I do any AI talk that I find that people are very, very amazed by is just how good these systems are at this point. In many cases, it actually beats a human in finding out things about an image. Uh, so overall, you know, humans are good at identifying certain things that they are always exposed to, but bad image quality, things from other cultures and so on, these systems are now doing amazingly well. So that is our starting point here. Latin pretty amazing. Very, very easy to call because like I said, you can just make rest calls into this. And, and but we haven't barely scratched the surface of what's possible. So let's go ahead and look at some other examples here. One of them is Code Magazine. So that's the magazine we publish, as I mentioned. And you'll notice that when you go to the Code Magazine website, and I'll go to the All Issues page here, which is going to list all the issues of the magazine. And you'll see that there's all these magazines coming up. And then when I click into one of them, let's say this guy here, it shows the magazine image and it shows it on this uh, kind of fancy red background. And this is going to come up in a moment here and then we can decide whether it looks good. I think this looks pretty good. I think a lot of people would find this pleasing. But then if I go to a completely different one, uh, of course, it uses a different color. And again, I think this looks fairly pleasing. This probably wouldn't look so good on the prior red background. And what we do here is we use this custom, the standard vision API. We upload the image to the system and say, give me back all the information, including that accent color that I've shown you before. Right? So it gives me back an accent color and it says, hey, this would look good, good with this particular cover. Most people would find this pleasing. Maybe not everyone, but probably better than what I, as a non-designer, can pick. And sometimes it's it's pretty cool. Like with this, uh, you can say, well, you know, I picked the green because there was a lot of green in it. Well, by that logic, it should have picked black for this one, but it didn't. It said, no, this this orange in here, or one that I always like is this one, where well, there's almost no purple in it except for the shirt. Yet it, yet it says, hey, this would look really good with this particular color. So 
So that's a cool use of this particular system that we use in the real world and that you can see in action every day. Um, another thing is face ID. Uh, again, facial recognition is pretty much a solved problem. It has by far the best image recognizer uh, in the world as far as facial recognition goes. There's standardized tests for this. And Microsoft has the last few years always won that test. And it gives you information about the face, where it is. It tells you male, female. It tells you how old that person likely is. It tells you uh, whether they're happy or sad and things like that. So I don't have a lot of time to go into this, but check it out. This is really, really good in case you need any kind of facial recognition. And again, you can do this both on still images as well as on videos. So that's a cool thing to know. Um, now, another thing that I want to mention here is the Bing Image Search API. This is in a way similar to computer vision, and a lot of people always say, well, what's the difference between these two? Well, this is kind of the opposite of the computer vision API. In the computer vision API, you give it an image and you say, tell me everything you know about this. This is, I have some text, and I want an image that matches that text, and then I want to go from that image on. Okay, so I can actually show you an example for that, um, and that will make it clearer. So this is a, kind of a small sample I extracted from a system that uh, I unfortunately can't show you, but that we did from a cust for a customer. So in this, this uh, example, I can go in here and I can say, I want to look for a certain search like a skier. And I go and I hit search and I, I'll show you the code in a moment, but this just hits the REST API. It's very, very simple. And then it returns information to me about, hey, here is some skiers. And, and yep, sure enough, these people are all skiers. And I can then go in and I can say, say, okay, well, let's say this image here, I like that a lot. Let's take a look at what this is. And then I'm downloading the image here and I'm getting information about what's in here. Now, let's say I need an image similar to that, but it's not quite what I want. What I can do is I can dig deeper and I can I can do many, many different things. But the sample that I picked out here is because I think it's kind of funky and, and unusual is I can tell the system, you know, I like this image and I would like to find things that are visually similar to this one. And now you'll see over here my search uh, has updated. And you'll see that we now have all skiers that are somewhat visually similar to the one we had here. So we do in white suit. A lot of them will have a gate that they are passing, uh, or at least in a very similar posture. It also understands the concept of a gate. So even people going through the gate the other way, that's also still similar. And uh, so it does those types of things. And now you're going to say, well, it's all nice and good, but why would I ever have to look for a skier. Well, what we do with this is we use this for product databases. So we have a customer uh, that deals with uh, perishable products, so fruits, vegetables, and so on. And they have a large product database, and they need the ability to search for product images. So let's say they have a banana in the system, and they're looking for a nice image of a banana, so they can go in here and do search. And now here we go. We have all kinds of images for bananas. Um, and then they can go in and they can say, oh, yeah, I like this image or, or another image. And then they can upload that into the system. But the problem is they have so many employees and it's difficult to maintain the quality of their product database. And so they wanted to have a little bit of extra logic on this. So we're doing things like checking the quality of the image, of course, but also the content. Because what if there's a disgruntled employee who is uploading different types of uh, product images that we don't want, right? So one of the things we can do here is I have this little checkbox and this checkbox is check for fruit. So when I pick something that came up in the banana search, let's say this little guy here, and I load that. Now note that it says, hey, this is not fruit, right? That's not in the image as you can see over here. That's just a label that I attach to it. And the reason I know that is because the, the recognizer gives me tags and fruit was not one of them. However, if I pick the real banana here, oh, but still tells us not fruit. Well, that happens on occasion. Let's see if we can find a different one that is fruit. Yeah, I don't know. 
guess I'm not clearing out the label or something. What we have here. Anyway, it's not really cooperating in my sample here. And of course, these images change every time. Let's pick a different one. Okay, it's for some reason not really cooperating, but uh, trust me, the sample normally will get the source code. And um, and then there we go, same image now I cleared it. So uh, it knows, I guess I just had a refresh problem. It knows that this is fruit, but it knows that some other things uh, like this shake here is not really fruit. And, and, and I can then highlight that, right? And what we do most of the time is we don't just let the system decide this, but we flag it. We say, hey, somebody should review this. This may not be okay. Uh, so that's kind of cool. That's the Bing image search API. So we're now slowly getting into the more sophisticated search versions, right? So you had that. Um, but now let's talk about the real interesting stuff, and that is custom vision. Custom vision means you're using the same type of features, but you actually want to customize it to what you want to do. Uh, and there's a special custom vision API. This is relatively easy to find. It's just customvision.ai is the, is the URL for this. And we can use this to train our own model. So the idea here is you start out you train a model by uploading images and telling the system what it is. Now, in the past, you had to do this with thousands and thousands of images, and then it kind of worked. With these new systems, you upload a handful of images, and the results are amazing. Okay. After this, this can be done manually. This can be done programmatically. So if you have lots of images, you can automate this. Um, and then once you have this, you can just use this and ping it as a service, call it through your own systems. Uh, it's very, very easy to do that. People don't realize this is that while it takes a lot of infrastructure to train these systems, it doesn't take near horsepower to actually run these systems. So you can create these trained models and you can then download them in a small container and now it's so efficient, you can run it on your local machine, but you can even run it in IoT devices. So you can have internet cameras, for instance, that would then use your models and, and just use them on the device. So pretty straightforward. Now let's take a look at what I've done with this. Uh, I'm a scuba diver, and so I dive and I take photographs of things underwater. And what I always wanted is I wanted a system that would identify what's in my photos, my underwater photos, what marine animals are in there. And I tried this 10 years ago and I really didn't get anywhere because it was just way too difficult. And now maybe two years ago, I picked this back up again and I made this, uh, this example. That's my little fish ID example. So let's go into this here. So where I'm going for this is at customvision.ai. When you go in here, uh, you normally see a sign in link and so on, and you can just sign up for free. I've already loaded that here. And in here is my fish ID application. And so what I've done here is I've uploaded images. So I can simply go and I can, can say upload more images here by clicking the add images button. I would then pick some image, uh, whatever, image of Obelix here, and then I give it some tags. And then it will use that uh, to train. If I say, oh, this is Obelix climbing up the nose of the Sphinx here, then I can tag that as such and upload it. And I'm not going to upload an image here because I've already done that ahead of time. So I got various images in here. For instance, I got all these images of lionfish and I tag them to be a lionfish. And so I did this with several others. I have trumpet fish, I have different turtles, different sharks. And so you upload this and within a matter of minutes, and that's also very, very interesting. It just takes 30 seconds or a minute, or maybe if you've a lot, it takes a few minutes to train these models. So there's a lot of horsepower on the back end to, to, to train these models. And none of it is really our concern. We don't have to work at all how this works. But then what we can do is once this is trained, we can perform a test here and we can say browse to a file and I've created some example files for this specific purpose here. Uh, fish ID example images, and I can go and say, pick this shark here, okay? And then, then 
the system tells us what this is. So it says there's a 99.9% .9 probability that this is a tiger shark. And there's zero probability that this is any of these other things that it possibly might be. Um, so that's pretty good because clearly this is a tiger shark. We can now go, we can pick something else like, uh, let's pick this one here. And this is fairly similar, but this is a great white. And, you know, the images that I trained this with, they weren't exactly these images. They were just other images of sharks. But this particular image here is an image of a great white. And sure enough, it says 99.8% certainty that this is a great white shark. And it could maybe be a tiger shark, but 0.1%. So no, not really. Okay. So it is very, very certain that that's what it is. And... And that was trained by me in a matter of minutes. Now I also have an example of all this from a, a service. Here's my fish identifier app that I'm going to load here. And in this case, I just made uh, myself a UI that does all this. And then I'll show you the code. And the code is very similar to, to a lot of these things. Uh, they all follow the same pattern. So here we go. Uh, let's pick another image. If my dialog comes up. Hello. Let's try that again. Windows is kind of at a standstill here. We'll give it a moment. If not, we'll move on. Um, all right, so I'm, I'm picking an image, and while we're waiting for this, I'll show you the code here. So what I'm doing is I'm just from this image, and then I'm displaying it, so I'm making it an image source that has nothing to do with the action task. But then I just use a regular HTTP call, and I'm adding a few headers that I need here, so you get a key for your... Uh, thing. This is just my demo key I'm using right now. And I'm just getting this, this URL that I use. And this has my specific project in it. And then I just upload the data to this thing. So I'm attaching the actual bytes. The JSON result, similar to what we just saw in the example that we saw in the test bench. All right, so I'm getting, I'm getting back a JSON result and then I, I can parse that JSON. And for some reason, my Windows dialog apparently is really not coming up. I'll try without the debugger. No, probably because I'm sharing my screen or something. The Windows file open dialog doesn't launch. But, but you get the idea there. So that's pretty amazing that you can do this. And, and the accuracy of this is really, really good, right? So we can actually use files. Now my dialogue's not even coming up here anymore. That's handy. So we'll just move on from that. Terminate that. But you get the idea, right? That this is, you can do some amazing stuff with this. And today, really straightforward to do this. Um, I don't have a, a huge amount of time here in this particular example. We actually have an upcoming article in Code Magazine about this that goes into more detail. But just to give you another example or two here, just so you know what you can do with this kind of thing. And this is one that really blows my mind. And this is something that Google published about not too long ago. Uh, this example has to do with retina images. Okay, what's a retina image? So I can only explain it in layman's terms and, and I know nothing about the behind the scenes stuff. But basically a retina image is when, a, when an eye doctor uh, takes a photo into your eye and the, uh, the, the back of the eye essentially then shows something like what you see on the screen here. It shows the, the capillaries in the eye and so on and so forth. And, and eye doctors, when they look at this stuff, it apparently tells them a lot. Now, one thing it doesn't tell them, and that is if they see an image, a retina image, they cannot tell whether it's from a man or a woman. We as humans, human experts, do not know of a way to differentiate between a male and a female retina image. 
but computers can. And, and this is just really amazing to me. And so Google published this analysis and I was like, huh, I wonder if I could actually replicate that. And now my system is really not cooperating anymore. So I can't even go to the browser apparently. Let's see if we can terminate a few things here. Yeah, the browser's frozen too. Let's see if we can. Oops. We can terminate the edge task here. Yeah, now my task manager is frozen. Well, we'll have to just make do with our slide deck here. Uh, so what I've done, and, and again, you can, I'll, I'll send your code samples and you can read up on this more. But what I've done is I've downloaded about 150 retina images of men from men from all around the world. And I took 150 or so from women from all around the world and I uploaded it into the same system. And I just tagged it and said, this is a woman's image, this is a man's image. And then I gave it a try and it worked. It was really amazing. Uh, so the system could actually go and it could totally figure out, is this a man or a woman's retina? Now it didn't work as well as Google system. Google, I think, matched with 95% accuracy or more. Uh, mine was maybe 75, 80%. But of course, Google trained the system with thousands and thousands of images. And I just had a handful because it really wasn't that easy in the first place to actually get my hands on these retina images. So all sampling, I could totally get to that level of accuracy. Now, why does the computer know? I don't know. It's maybe male arteries through the eye look slightly different. Maybe the little dots are slightly different shape. Maybe a combination of those. Something that the computer can pick up on can pick up on that we as humans cannot or we do not know whether that's the case. And uh, the Google system actually highlights how the system found the differences and it's wildly different things. Sometimes it really is the arteries. Sometimes it's just like, well, the whole image is just different, right? And so that's one of the, the difficulties very often with this sort of stuff is knowing why the computer knows. But it just blows my mind that a computer vision system could be better in uh, detecting something that's so human. So, so that's that really fascinates me. And the final thing that I want to draw your attention to, don't really have the time to go into this in detail, but I also want to uh, at least have mentioned this. You can do logo detection. Uh, so I'm using here uh, one of my favorite sports teams, the Vegas Golden Knights, uh, the hockey team uh, from Las Vegas. And what you can do with this is you can train the system to detect logos within an image. So it's a little different from the prior thing. When I give it a fish, I say, what's the fish? Analyzes the whole image. The logo detection is more, here is an image and it may have 50 different logos in them. Tell me what they are. And so what you could do with this, for instance, is I can take a picture of the crowd at a hockey game and I can count the logos of people who are wearing, say, a Vegas night sweater versus the opposing team. And then I get back the, the count of the images or in something that might be a little more useful is uh, what we do with this is uh, we take photos from stores. Uh, so you may have a shelf in a supermarket with all kinds of products on it and you detect what these products are. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a specialized version of object detection optimized for graphical logos rather than 3D objects. So interesting thing that you, you can do. And with that, uh, we've really almost reached the end of my presentation. Few training best practices that I want to share with you. Like I said, it is amazing how far you can get with relatively few images. Like the fish identifier, I uploaded probably 15 images of sharks. And it can very accurately detect the difference between a tiger shark and a great white and other sharks, even though they may look very, very similar in humans. Certainly, laymen may have a very hard time knowing or even seeing the difference. 
But if you want to be truly accurate, you should create a lot more images. 50 is the recommended minimum from Microsoft. I would recommend even more. So with something like the fish identifier, uh, what I would do is I would create a community around an app where people can upload it and say, hey, I saw this tiger shark. So they then tag it as a tiger shark and hopefully over time you'll have hundreds of images of the different marine animals that people will see and then the, the system will perform even better. But again, it's amazing um, how well the system performs anyway. When you do this, uh, different sizes, angles, lighting, different backgrounds is great. You do not want images that are super perfect. I mean, yes, you can mix a few of those in, but it's much more valuable to the system to have them in all kinds of different versions because you also want it to recognize it. If you have a tiger shark that's in murky water and you expect the system to recognize that, then it's, of course, easier if you had an image used for training that was in murky waters rather than a perfect uh, tiger shark. You, you may have things that are occluded. Maybe you only see half a tiger shark, right, and so on. Okay. So ignore or do not aim for these unnatural images. Like you wouldn't want just a tiger shark on a white background uh, because you might think, oh, that's a better image, but it's not natural. Okay? Uh, the other thing you want to do is you probably want to add negatives, right? So if you had, let's say, a car or a, a building that had an image of a tiger shark on the side, you would probably want to add that and say, hey, but this is not a shark. It's just something that's similar, but it's incorrect. And that will also help the system to, to differentiate that, hey, this is not what we're looking for. So anyway, um, we already talked about that. Uh, here's that subscription link one more time. Uh, take advantage of that. Like I said, no strings attached, it's just a free subscription. And with that, thank you very much for watching. I hope you got a lot out of this. I hope uh, you'll start building apps that use this stuff. Feel free to contact me. If you have any questions, I always tell people, consider us a resource. I, my company is not the kind of company that will send you an invoice for answering a small question. Uh, so I'd be more than happy to, to talk to anyone about how that can apply to your project. And, and I'd love to hear how people use this stuff because to me, this, this is a lot of fun. It's, it's very exciting. So thank you very much. Uh, I'll be around if you have any questions. And uh, I'm actually doing the next presentation as well. But enjoy the conference and happy coding. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marcus. And we have a few questions on behalf of the communities here. So can students or maybe just curious developers try cognitive services for free? Is there a free tier to just play around with that? Um, it depends on what you're using. Uh, so usually there's some free tier, but these are all different services. Um, but yeah, so there's usually a free tier. Usually you need some kind of Azure account and then it's just once you get into the real production type of usage scenarios, then, then you need to start paying for it. But yeah, usually uh, there's some free tier. Now, realistically, you know, if you get into really using this for production, you'll start having to pay a small fee. But it's usually not to where it will break the bank. Okay, thank you. And the next one is... Uh... All the source code for the demos during your session available somewhere on GitHub, maybe? Uh, yeah, I have to talk to the organizer of the conference to see how, how to best share this. And uh, of course, these are all uh, samples that go with the Code Magazine article that we're about to publish here, I think in the next issue or so, or, or the one after. And certainly I can share it with the conference. And if somebody wants to connect with me directly, I'm more than happy to, to share these samples. The only thing with these samples is they don't run as is because you need to sign up for an account and I can't give you my account because otherwise you'd push me into that uh, for pay tier. But you'll just have to change the key in the samples. And I think that's it. And thanks a lot for the amazing session. And we'll be taking a little break for your next session coming just right up after this one. Great. Thank you.